Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. And hello and welcome to episode number 264 of Mets Musings. Hope everybody had a nice week out there. We are starting to get the touch of fall and the cold weather that we all hate out there. Hopefully we all hate it. I know I do. It's disgusting. Not my favorite time of the year, the cold weather. Can't stand it. Can't wait for the heat to return and the spring to return and baseball to return. New York Mets baseball. We still have some baseball going. The World Series is going on between the Chicago Cubs and the Cleveland Indians, and they are tied at one game apiece. As they come back to uh, Wrigley Field, the not-so-modern Wrigley Field, the oldest ballpark, in baseball, or well, the second oldest, uh, they're fighting it out with Fenway, but um, they're ripping that place apart and, and uh, renovating it, as you know, and still have uh, a long way to go. We'll see how it turns out. I don't think it's going to be the same ballpark. It's not going to have the same charm when they get done with it. As anything else, they'll modernize and, and they'll add more concessions and they're going to add uh, something around uh, to make the uh, concourses wider. And it's just going to probably take away from the whole charm of the place. But, uh, you know, that's the way you got to do it nowadays. So they are doing it in Chicago. And, and last week, if you remember, I uh, left some questions out there for... You, the listener, to answer, and we got some replies. Uh, some of the question was, should the Mets sign Kenley Jansen or another relief pitcher, another closer to lessen the load on uh, Familia? And what do you do with Travis Darno? Should the Mets re-sign Bartolo or, or Jerry Blevins or Neil Walker? Where does Jose Reyes fit in? Is David Wright coming back? And what to do with Jay Bruce? Just a couple of the questions. We got some answers. Uh, predictably, a lot of the answers were about uh, U.N. Cespedes and re-signing him. And uh, I'll read you a couple of quick examples. And I have a, a long email and a voicemail that came in. So we'll get to them. Uh, but George from Hop Hog writes that uh, uh, Cespedes must be signed. That's the most important thing in the offseason. Other things will take its uh, place, will fall into place, I should say. And uh, that was the kind of the tone of a lot of the emails that came in. Peter from Franklin Square says practically the same thing. Cespedes must be signed in the offseason. Power bat in the lineup. Mets need it badly. If they if they lose him, they lose a chunk of the lineup and the MV, and the uh, power in the lineup. And uh, must sign Cespedes. Number one priority for the offseason. So... That's how a lot of uh, the emails are going. And uh, really, uh, Jeff from Long Island, he answered all of the questions that I put out there. And I'd like to read that to you. Uh, he says he'd like to answer the questions that I put out on the last podcast. As for Jay Bruce, I didn't like the trade when it happened. Neither did I. Uh, for the past two seasons, we were told Dilson Herrera was the future of second base, which base which is why I was okay with getting Neil Walker for one year to hold the position in 2016. Obviously, Walker had a good year until his season-ending injury. Anyway, too late now. We traded Herrera. I say pick up Bruce option with the idea of trading him at some point. However, this must be in conjunction with the signing of Cespedes. Jonas has been on four teams prior to last season. I think he likes it here. No one will give him grief if he plays golf. He may not go after every last penny available. He is a superstar in New York. If the team sign Yo, then trade Bruce for a couple of prospects or a bullpen help. And uh, I, I think that's a good idea. It's, it's right on the money which you would have to say, and uh, uh, Jeff is uh, 
right on the target there. And he goes on to say, speaking of bullpen help, I'd like to get Jansen and put him in tandem with Familia, but that will not happen. Familia is sal salary arbitration eligible, expected to get around $8 million. I cannot see having two very high-paid bullpen pieces. I think the closer role is overrated. Starters need to go deeper into games like they did years ago. I know the reasons why they don't, but I don't agree with them. It's not about pitch counts and inning limits. If the pitcher is throwing nice and easy and avoids stressful innings, there is no reason why they cannot pitch deep into games. It seems that once the pitcher hits the 100 pitch mark, it is time to take them out. Nonsense. Every pitcher is different. Can you imagine if Tom Seaver were to come out after 100 pitches after every game? But I digress. If Wathen could train the starters to go deep, then Familia and Reed and split the closer duties. Mets will not sign Jansen just too much money. I agree again, Jeff. Uh, just thought I would throw it out there. I would like to see somebody else pick up some of the closing Roll as it was and uh, take some of the stress off of Familia. I think that might help him in the long run and especially into the postseason. Now that Herrera is not an option, I would try to sign Walker, given he is cleared with a clean bill of health. TJ Walker did a nice job, but I am not convinced that he is the long-term answer, Jeff goes on. There is a reason why he was in the minors for so long. Walker may be a few years older, but he is a good, solid, professional baseball player. Reyes would be my super utility guy. After the 2015 season, I would have preferred that utility role to go to Daniel Murphy. But uh, Murph showed he p could play first, second, third, and it would have been enough at bats, but that ship sailed. Reyes showed he can play a decent third base, and, and while I would love David Wright to play a full season, I do not see that happening. Reyes can play all infield positions except first base. Reyes is grateful to be back in New York, and I hope he embraces the chance to be a big part of the team, albeit not as a full-time player. And, you know, who knows? Uh, Jose Reyes is... Uh, he's athletic enough he probably could pick up first base i wouldn't put it past to him trying to pick up a first base and and play it well but that might be conforto's position position it might be uh um lucas duda might be back we, that's another thing but uh, jeff goes on he wants to re-sign jerry blevins a good lefty i agree with that and he would like to see now feel cespedes Lagaris, and conforto in right let Duda go. He is too streaky. Resign Loney. Better defense and batting average. As for Darno, I would really like him to succeed. However, Ray R Rivera really showed me something with this defense and leadership to the pitching staff or of the pitching staff. The catcher should split the duties until one of them stands out as a starter. Uh, thanks for the forum. To air my views, Jeff from Long Island. And Jeff, thank you for uh, taking the opportunity and taking the time to write in and to uh, uh, answer those questions. And I think I'm pretty much in agreement with Jeff on those uh, answers. Uh, perhaps uh, I'm still holding out hope for uh, Duda. I think, uh, you know, it's, it's hard to toss away those 30 home runs. They might try to non-tender him and then tender him at a lesser contract if that's legal i'm not even sure whether that's legal or not but that might be something that they may try to do with lucas duda i i'm not I, i'm i'm not sold on loney um he did a nice job don't get me wrong but um limited role uh, don't know, you know, how he's going to do long term. Um, we also have uh, um, uh, Wilma Flores. What do you do with him? I mean, there's still a lot of questions. And, and uh, I'll put these questions out on the, uh, on the website. And if people still want to answer them, um, they can. They can send in the emails or send in a voicemail and answer it. And, and uh, we'll go over it again. Uh, this will be questions that that'll go on all winter practically and and some might arise as uh, we get closer to the season but now we've got a, a voicemail from our friend uh trip in ohio and he chimes in 
and let's take a listen to uh, Trip. I wanted to call in and just give you my uh, my wish list and my hope for the lineup next year. I think it all kind of depends on Cespedes if he comes back or if he doesn't. And in my mind, I'm kind of thinking that he's not. So I think if Cespedes does not come back, that I think we should make a big move this winter and try to get somebody else to replace him. And for me, I think they should go for Trout. I know it's kind of a long shot, but I think maybe they could offer Harvey, Bruce, and then either Montero or Inoa. Maybe they'd go for that. They'd be two solid pitchers and RBI leader, maybe. So that would be our center fielder. I'd like to see Conforto and Granderson do the corners. And then on the infield, I would keep Reyes at third. I know we've got Rice, but I just don't think he can play that much. So I'm almost thinking he would be kind of a sub at this point. I don't know, but I'd keep Reyes at third. I'd put Wilmer Flores at second. And if T.J. Rivera back him up. I just think Flores is good for the lineup, and uh, I'd like to see him play. I'd keep Duda at first, Cabrera at short, and I'd stay with Darno at catcher. I know he's had a tough time, but I think if he could get a, a season and without these injuries, you know, maybe he could turn it around. And then, you know, the pitching staff, if, if we did lose Harvey, I think either Wheeler, Gesellman, Lugo, those three guys, I think, I think we're pretty solid at pitching. So, anyway, that's my take on it. I know it probably won't happen, but I'd love to see Trout in blue and orange. Thanks, Gary. Have a good one. And thanks, Trip, for uh, uh, taking the time to call in. And Trout would be uh, interesting in blue and orange. Uh, you know, it's funny. It started as a joke a couple of years ago talking about getting uh, Trout in and, and – uh, uh, amongst some of my friends and stuff, and and now it seems to explode where people really think it it could be a possibility. Don't know whether it would happen at all. I could see the California trying to move them, and I could see someone putting together enough package. Whether that package is big enough that that uh, trip suggested it might take more they might want more prospects they probably would ask for a conforto or a nimmo and probably a rosario um it, it could be interesting uh what do they think of chichini chichini is in the arizona fall league we're going to get to that a little bit later in the show but uh, he's having okay he's playing second and shortstop there could show some versatility. Would he be willing for a team to take him instead of a Rosario? Like to hang on to Rosario as tough as long as we could, but it's a tough decision if you can get Mike Trout. Do you trade a Rosario then and take a chance with a Cicchini and uh, somebody else coming up behind them? Uh, they're a little thin at short after that, so you know, it's kind of a tough decision. Do you go with somebody then a Reynolds if you can get a Mike Trout? Would you, when Cabrera, Cabrera leaves, if he leaves after this season, uh, and you trade a Rosario, to get a Mike Trout is uh, something that it, it could be a team changer, it could, an organization changer, much like Carter, much like Piazza deal. So it's something to consider. Um, would the pitching be enough? You you could trade them, uh, as uh, Tripp said, uh, perhaps Harvey, perhaps Yanoa, uh, maybe even a veteran pitcher in there or uh, another prospect a little bit down the line. Uh, interesting to see. At least start the conversation. Get in touch with California, see, or uh, whatever they're calling themselves this week, and uh, make the contact, make the proposal. Let's see, what would it take to get Mike Trout? 
they say we wouldn't trade him. Well, what if you wanted to trade him, what would it take? Maybe you can work from there. Let's take a quick break, and we'll come back with some news um, that everybody's probably heard already, but uh, interesting anyway, and uh, come back and with some Arizona Fall League stuff as well. So uh, we'll be back after these messages. Hey, baseball fans and book fans as well. This is Frank Nappy, author of the Legend of Mickey Tussler series, inviting all of you to learn more about my protagonist, Mickey Tussler, an incredible pitching prodigy who has autism. Follow Mickey's journey as he captures the hearts of fans everywhere with his blazing fastball and indomitable spirit. Please visit Amazon or www.franknappy.com for more information. Hi, this is the world-famous Mr. Brewtown of BrewtownSports.Potomatic.com. You know, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+, Plus. Uh, Brewtown Sports. You can also listen to the show at Stitcher.com, TuneIn.com, and iTunes.com. And we've got the new one. It's called BrewtownRadio.Webley.com. But the one that I'm most proud of being on is BaseballPodcast.net. It is the home of great baseball talk shows. Check it out, my show and all kinds of other programs all about Major League Baseball. So check it out. That's BaseballPodcast.net, the home for great baseball talk shows. The Phillies and Mets rivalry has never been better. Hi, my name is Rich Baxter, and I host Phillies Talk Podcast. I hope you'll join me as we talk all about the Phillies all season long. That's Phillies Talk Podcast at fightinphillies.com. And now back to Gary Mack and this great edition of Mets Musings. Five one six six one nine six three four one. That is the comment voicemail hotline. If you'd like to be a part of the show and drop us a line, leave us a comment or a voicemail question, anything at all. Call that number five one six six one nine six three four one, or go to metsmusings.com and click on that widget in the middle of the screen, and that's a speak pipe, and you can leave a voicemail right through your com- computer through your computer's microphone. Or if you prefer to do things the old-fashioned way, send us an email at metsmusings at gmail.com. The Facebook page is facebook.com slash groups slash Mets Musings, and the Twitter handle is at Mets Musings 1. And uh, if you'd uh, like to help out the show, check out our Patreon page. Check out the campaign at patreon.com slash Mets Musings. All right, we're back, and a report Wednesday night reiterated that the uh, likely outcome that Uena Cespedes will opt out of his contract with the New York Mets. Not a big surprise. He's going to go free agent. Uh, not not at all surprised at that. So, um, but now there's reports that he will opt out. Nothing becomes official until three days after the World Series concludes when the Cespedes camp must notify the Mets if the player is opting out. He has two years and $47.5 million remaining on the deal he signed with the Mets last winter, but will be staring at substantially higher guaranteed payout on the free agent market. The Mets remain interested in retaining Cespedes, according to industry sources, but at the right price. The expectation is the Mets will take the same tactic with Cespedes as last offseason when they waited out the market and resigned him for fewer guaranteed years than he originally sought. I don't know if this is a good tactic to take. However, I'm sure that they have a plan in mind, and probably the plan is they will pick up the option on Bruce, and if they do not sign Cespedes, they will have Bruce Oh, God. To pick up the slack and the power. However, Bruce is a lefty that leaves him 
very vulnerable to left-handed pitching. They have no big right-handed bat then, and that's what they really need. They need a right-handed slugger. There are a number in the free agent market. However, some of them are a little up there in age, and, and but maybe for a year. Uh, they you know Jose Batista is 36. He's on the market. Uh, Edwin and Carcione, he could play first base, and uh, he is on the market. I think he's 31, maybe. Um, Mark Trumbo is on the market. He led the majors in home runs last year. So uh, Matt Holliday, but he's 36, and it's always been injury prone. So there are some options out there, but... Um, I would strongly consider filling the spot if he leaves in in house. I mean, give Conforto another shot. Uh, you still have Grandison, and uh, nobody's really talking about him too much. Center field, you've got Ligaris. Hopefully, he stays healthy. Conforto proved he could play center in a pinch. Uh, so. Maybe you have to change your philosophy from the three-run home run idea to a more get-on-base, make contact, which makes more sense anyway, and uh, try to score that way rather than hitting the three-run home run. And this from Mets blog, uh, the the trades, crazy and otherwise, are starting to uh, come out. And this is from uh, a Rays Tampa Bay Rays fan and fan side author Althea Pashman says there is talk in Tampa that the Mets and Yankees may have interest in trading for left-handed starting pitcher Drew Smiley. Smiley is expected to earn roughly $7 million next season during what will be his second year salary arbitration. He is scheduled to be a free agent after 2018. Pashman feels the best possible match would result in the Rays dealing Smiley to the Mets for Darno and outfielder Michael Conforto. Please, no, don't make that deal. I, I don't understand why they would be interested in a, in, a, in a starting pitcher, albeit a lefty. They don't have a lefty in the rotation, but no, I'm not going to give up Darno, yes. Uh, but Conforto, for a guy that's got a, a what a 4.37 ERA or something along that line, no, I, I don't make that trade. I think that's an awful trade if the Mets make that deal to bring in another starter. It's just and, and there's no guarantee he would even crack the starting rotation with Harvey, uh, provided we don't trade him and uh, Wheeler. And Cologne, if we sign him, and Syndergaard, and Mats. We do have a lefty. What am I thinking? Mats, of course. Uh, so, no, we, we don't. I don't see the need. I don't see the, uh, the, the reasoning behind it. It just doesn't make sense to waste two options as, as Darno and Conforto to bring in a so-so lefty. No, don't, don't, please don't make that deal. Um, doesn't sound like it's worthwhile. It, it it almost sounds like we're going back to the Jay Bruce deal again. Another bad deal. Herrera for Jay Bruce. All right. We're not going to revisit that, though. Uh, Arizona Fall League. It's the Scottsdale Scorpions that the Mets are playing on. They are, there are, um, I think it is five different teams that send prospects to uh, one of these teams is six Arizona Fall League teams. Each one has five teams that they send prospects to. So, in other words, on the, the Scorpions, there are players, prospects from the Yankees, the Phillies, the Angels, and one other team that I'm forgetting, and I apologize for that. But they're not doing so well. They're 3-11 and on the year. They are managed by Tom Goodwin. Um, they are struggling, and the Mets on the team. Let's see. Um, batting wise, Champ Stewart is uh, uh, hitting two ninety two. Not too bad. Having a fairly decent time of it. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, two ninety two. Uh, Gavin Cicchini is hitting two fifty, but he had a big night the other night. He went three for five. Uh, Tim Tebow, of course, is struggling mightily. He's hitting 107. Matt Oberst is, uh, doesn't have a batting average. 
He's played in five games, 19 at bats, hasn't got a hit. So he's really, really struggling. Uh, Corey Oswalt, former Cyclone, he's 1 0 with a 6 ERA. He started three games. Uh, it's got the 1 0 record, but kind of struggling there. Marcus Molina is 0 0, another former Cyclone with a 3.86 ERA. But he's coming back off of uh, Tommy John surgery. So that's really a good sign. They're really watching to see how he is throwing, whether he's around the plate, and how well he's pitching, is the velocity, that sort of thing. So uh, they're happy so far with the results from Molina. Corey Taylor is uh, 0-1, 2.84. David Roseboom is 0-1, 1.93 in relief. And uh, so while they've got a loss, they're still playing pretty well. And uh, let's see, Scottsdale plays the Salt River Rafters this evening at 6.35 p.m. Mountain Time. So I guess that would be around 8.35 our time here as I record this on October 27, 2016. Um, it is a six-week season with the championship game on November 19th. And unless the um, Scorpions can get hot, I don't think they're going to be in that uh, championship game. The five teams that are on the Scorpions, here it is. Angels, Giants, Mets, Phillies, and the Yankees. So I forgot the San Francisco Giants. And um, Greg Bird uh, of the Yankees is actually on that team as well. Uh, court and, and uh, also um, some another former uh, Staten Island Yankee is also on the uh, Scottsdale roster. So, so that's it. I mean, uh, we will see. Uh, Tim Tebow continues to struggle. Will he make it to the end of the Arizona Fall League? Will he make it to spring training? There was some question about that. There is some belief that um, he will not be at spring training. That they may, uh, one of the reasons they put him on the Arizona Fall League was almost to set him up for failure to see how he would perform. And either he would opt out and end this attempt at playing professional baseball or the Mets would say, hey, look, you know, it's not working out. Or they could invite him to spring training and have him go to the minor league camp, which is also a possibility. And there's still a lot of people that believe he will end up with the Brooklyn Cyclones when all is said and done. Short season A-League ball starting in June. Uh, interesting on both accounts. We'll have to see. We'll, we'll know more after November 19th. When the uh, the Arizona Fall League com completes its season, and we'll see what the Mets' next step in the Tim Tebow saga will be. It, it it's it, I don't know why they signed them. There are those that think because of uh, Yoenis Cespedes, they share an agent, and they wanted to butter him up, so they uh, they did him a favor and signed Tebow. We'll see how it all plays out over this winter as we uh, face weeks and weeks of darkness and cold as winter comes along. So uh, stay tuned for that. Well, that does it for this edition of the podcast. This edition is brought to you by our Patreon supporters. If you would like to help in keeping this podcast going, I urge you to check out our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash Mets Musings. So thanks for listening to this episode, and until next time, keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets!